Ben. from the Coalfield House in College Park, Maryland. The New York Knicks tangle with the fast-paced leaders of the Central Division, the Baltimore Bullets, led by the rebounding duo of Wes Unsold and Elvin Hayes. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Gillette, makers of the revolutionary razor with two separate blades. The Gillette Track 2, two-bladed shaving system. By the Foundation for Full Service Banks on behalf of the full service banks in your community. And by the B.F. Goodrich Tire Company, makers of the Lifesaver Steel Radial Tire. Now, if you want Goodrich, you'll just have to remember Goodrich. Today, we have the wrap-up of the back-to-back -back series between the probable first-round playoff opponents, Baltimore having defeated New York last night at Madison Square Garden. You're looking at the Eastern Conference standings, and unlike previous years, the team with the best record gets the home court advantage regardless of whether they finish one or two in their respective divisions. So you see with one playing four and two playing three in the playoffs, which will begin after the regular seasons following March 28th, the New York Knickerbockers, as it stands now, would meet their arch rival Baltimore in the playoffs. And the Knicks in the loss column are leading by four or have lost four less games. They have 11 games remaining to be played while the Baltimore Bullets have 15 left to be played here in the NBA. And this is the sixth game in their series that'll be played on the University of Maryland campus. And we're happy to be here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chris Shankle, and happy to be, along with Bill Russell, bringing you the first part of a three and one half hours of sports here on ABC. Our NBA game of the week will be followed by American sportsmen, and then it'll be Howard Cosell with another edition of Sports Magazine of today looking at the possible solutions to all the problems or questions surrounding amateur athletics, not only here, but in the world. Well, we're happy to be back working with uh, the great Bill Russell. Bill, with Baltimore winning last night, where they seldom do, Madison Square Garden, should that change their attitude about the Knicks? Well, probably because they probably had the thought that maybe they couldn't win in New York. Now, that, so that uh, helps the attitude and the fact that they think that they went out last night and they really feel that they took the game away from the Knicks and made the Knicks play bad basketball. Now, um, these two teams are a lot alike. Uh, no dominant big man uh, using uh, big forwards and, uh, and swift penetrating guards now. But the Bullets have to run to win, whereas the Knicks can uh, shoot around the fringes because for the first five or six, maybe seven guys, the Knicks are one of the finest shooting teams, I think, in the history of basketball. And Bill only once in the five meetings between these two clubs has a team scored a total of 100 points. That was New York. Baltimore never has. And with New York number one and NBA defense and Baltimore fourth, and with a capacity crowd here rooting mostly for Baltimore, this should be some battle. Right. I, I think it's going to be a real defensive struggle, and uh, it's not only a chance, Baltimore has a chance to catch the Knicks in the uh, 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 best record, but uh, they're trying to establish turf because they know they're going to play each other in the playoffs uh, to start with, and so they're, they're going to bang heads today. It's going to, it should be uh, uh, probably a good contact game. Bill, we look forward to your comments this afternoon, and we'll go more into that attitude a little bit later on. Speaking of attitude, uh, many of these professional stars, the superstars of pro basketball, have other interesting hobbies or even professions. In the case of Jerry Lucas of the New York Knickerbockers, all of us know that he has delighted young and old with his uh, magic. He is a great magician. Our pro player profiles have become very popular with you, so today let's look at Jerry Lucas. Here you see a regular deck of cards with a blue back. That is, all the cards are the same. Now, it's very easy to put a card on the bottom, and as you can see, all the cards are sitting, instead of being blue, have turned red. And if I turn this around, 
all the faces of the cards have vanished, and I have spelled my name, Jerry Lucas. As an eight or nine-year-old, I was quite bored and had a lot of nervous energy, and in my idle time, I was riding an automobile or walking to school and so forth, I started to invent games to play with myself to keep myself occupied. And the first of, th of these that I can recall doing was spelling alphabetically, and by that I mean rearranging a word and spelling it back in alphabetical order. That is, uh, chair, for instance, is A-C-H-I-R. Uh, telephone is E-E-E-H-L-N-O-P-T. Basketball <clears throat> is A-A-B-B-E-K-L-L-S-T. Well, I continued to do these things and other things. I did things you wouldn't believe. I counted and memorized a number of cracks uh, from my home to school and the sidewalk. I even got to the point where I started counting the number of broken paint strips and highways, and I found that there are 132 paint strips for every mile and every road in the country except in a couple of states. California has 200 and some, and Kansas 108. I got interested in magic, and at that point, I began to devour and read everything I could about it. When I got into college, John Havlicek was my roommate, and John was very concerned about me because he studied a, a lot more than I did, and I studied very little, actually, but I knew what I was doing because I was using my system. But I took the exams, I did very well, and, uh, and John was quite amazed with this. And then after that point, I started doing these things, the alphabetizing, the memory games, et cetera, for a lot of other people, and it entered into my sort of my magic act that I did. My interest in magic obviously led me to an interest in youngsters, I, or vice versa. I love children, and children love magic, so it was a logical hookup. And this led to, uh, when I came to New York, a, a, a three-hour special on the ABC network on magic and music and fun and games and whatnot. And I certainly hope to continue this after my playing days are over. On my next show, I'm uh, going to do some interesting things in magic. I'm going to make elephants disappear. Uh, I'm going to cut a lady into three pieces, take the middle piece out, put it back. She'll walk away. Uh, I'm going to turn myself into a tiger on stage. I'm creating another character, too, called Akgomedri Akelsu. Uh, which is alph alphabetized. Uh, magic uh, is Akgum. Uh, Edri Akelsu is Jerry Lucas in alphabetical order. <laughs> so my character is going to be Akgum Edri Akelsu, who will be sort of my alter ego. He will be a fumbling magician. He will be a magician who can't do anything right. I may have a split screen. On one side will be myself, Jerry Lucas, doing a trick, maybe putting eggs in a hat and flour and putting it on someone's head and nothing happens. And then Agamedri Akosu, on the other hand, on the other side of the screen, will do the same thing and put it on somebody's head and it'll just flop all over and be a big mess. So uh, Agam will be uh, the fellow who always messes up in magic and I will be the, the person that always does the things properly and right. So these will be two of my new characters that I'm developing for my shows. And I think they'll be a lot of fun, they'll be entertaining, and I hope, I hope people have some fun with them. 32-year-old Edry Acklesu, a native of Middletown, Ohio, an All-American in high school, and, of course, many times at Ohio State, Jerry Lucas of the New York Knickerbockers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the starting five for the visiting New York Knickerbockers. At forward, number 24 from Princeton, sixth-year professional Bill Bradley. Also at forward, number 22 from the University of Detroit, 11th year, Dave DeBusher. <laughs> Starting at center today, number 19 from Grambling, 9th year, Willis Reed. <laughs> at guard, normally wearing number 15, but today 21 from Winston-Salem, 6th year, Earl Monroe. At guard, number 10, from Southern Illinois, sixth year, Walt Frazier. And the coach of the New York Knickerbockers, Red Holtzman. And here are the Baltimore Bullets. At forward, number six from Providence, fourth year, Mike Reardon. At forward, number 11 from Houston, fourth year, Elvin Hayes. <laughs> Starting center, number 41 from Louisville, in his fourth year, Wes Unsel. <laughs> At guard, number 45 from California, Phil Chenier. <laughs> the other guard, number 21 from the University of Minnesota, sixth year, Archie Clark. And the head coach of the Baltimore Bullets, Gene Shue. 
So we'll return to College Park, Maryland for the tip-off after this message. And that cannot be canceled or returned. The New York Knicks and the Baltimore Bullets played last night. Here are the two officials. Number six is Don Murphy of the NBA and Paul Mihalik, number 22, on the far side of the court. Baltimore winning last night, 97 to 75. Hayes and Reed, up it goes for grabs, and it's Earl Monroe, former Bullet, wearing 21 today, and 22, Dave DeBusher. Hey, and the Knicks lead. The Knickerbockers behind Boston in their division. Here are the Baltimore Bullets in the white, orange, and blue who have already clinched their divisional title. This is Archie Clark, number 21, guarded by Monroe. Elvin Hayes, beautiful. <laughs> Elvin Hayes, 15th in scoring, 21 points, average per game, getting the first field goal for Baltimore as the Knicks have it. This is Walt Frazier, number 10. Over Chenier, ah, perfect shooting, Bill. We're three for three. I think they're going to have it. It's going to be a shootout. Now, these two teams are very good defensively, and those are tough shots they're making. Uh, I don't think that, he, that either team wants to continue just making those kind of shots. Chenier, who had 18 points against the Knickerbockers last night, puts Baltimore into a tie with New York 4-4. Four four. Dave DeBusher guarded by Wes Unsel. Hayes comes over to help number 11 after a Reed pick. Now it's Earl Monroe. Don't forget he's wearing 21 today, and Bill Russell has the full story on why. They give it to it his first chance. And two for two, Walt Frazier of Southern Illinois. Why is Earl Monroe wearing number 21, Bill? Well, uh, Earl washed his own jersey Friday night. Can you imagine a millionaire washing his own jersey? Oh, anyway, he hung it out to dry in his apartment laundry room, and somebody stole it. And nobody's missed. Each team is shooting three for three. It's a pretty good percentage. Start a game. <laughs> and no close ones. I think the closest shot's been about 17 feet. Perfect shooting thus far as we have a tie game at six. First missed shot, that by Bill Bradley, number 24. As the tap comes back out to Clark. Clark of Baltimore, number 21, guarded by Monroe. Into the corner to Hayes. Hayes guarded by Reed. The busher with the rebound. Off to Reed. Reed, who played for the first time in seven games last night, finds the range. Willis Reed, number 19. Last night, he had eight points and ten rebounds. Burned the instep of his left foot by using the ointment that he used on his left knee, which apparently is okay now. What shooting? His knee must be pretty tough, and his ankle must be uh, pretty tender. Yes. Baltimore arriving because of uh, weather last night, 12.30 a.m., the Knicks at 2 a.m. So after a battle at the Garden in New York, here they are again, and that just gives you an idea of just what a tough schedule these professional basketball players have. We have an 8-8 to -eight tie with 9.20 to go in the first quarter here at the University of Maryland campus, Cole Fieldhouse. And it goes to Reardon. Ah, and the former Knickerbocker. Beautiful hook shot. Four points. Two for two from the field as we get an outside weave with Bradley and Frazier. Reed has it now. Back to Frazier, number 10. Look at him jam up the right side of the lane. Beautiful move by Frazier. Robbed of a field goal. Let's see the move by the last bucket by Reardon. Perfect pass, he timed it perfect, and he, and he took the move without hesitation. Now, both these teams are shooting a fantastic percentage to start the game, but they'll both end up probably shooting around 50%, so that they're gonna, gonna have to miss a few. But the uh, bullets are gonna have to run. So there, there's the running to Clark. Bradley had stayed back defensively with Hayes. As Frazier gets the ball, he gives it to DeBusher. DeBusher deriving on Unsold. Passes off to Monroe, number 21. The fifth tie of the ball game with 8-12 to go, first quarter, 10-10. Now, both these teams are very, very intense. They're both concentrating very well, very, very hard, because this is a very important game. If the Bullets win it, then the Knicks are only three up in the loss column, and uh, the Bulls could catch him and, and get that home court advantage. The season ends March 28th, then into the playoffs in the first round, the best of seven series. 
Numbers one and four play. Numbers two and three go against each other. ABC, of course, will be doing will be doing prime time playoff games. We look forward to that as Willis Reed rebounds for New York. Gives off to Earl Monroe. And this is sort of uh, Roger man. Yes, this is a crowd, Bill. Isn't it unusual? It's about half and half, half Knicks fans and half Bullet fans. Which is kind of unusual. Uh, you would expect that uh, there would be more Bullet fans, but uh, it seems like everybody's left New York. It's still <laughs> every place you go, they got fans. And of course, uh, many uh, New York natives go to the University of Maryland uh, here. As we look at Archie Clark, who went to Minnesota, Providence College is Reardon, passes into Louisville's unsold. And a foul is spotted by Don Murphy. Paul Mahalik is the other official here. Let's see it again. Now, Wes is using his body to get between, and Dave is pushing with his hips. And that's his second foul, Bill, early in the game. So, with 6.59 to go in the first quarter, it's 12 to 12. Here are scores of last night's games played in the NBA. Baltimore defeating New York 97-75. Seattle over Detroit 115-113. Atlanta 136. Houston 125. Chicago 117. Golden State 116. The two officials, Paul Mahalik and Don Murphy, officiated the Atlanta game. And here's one of the coaches that occasionally tries to officiate. Red Holtzman of the New York Knickerbockers. But he does with a soft voice. Yes. Sort of like the Bill Russell of the Celtic coaching days. Wes Uncle at the line. Only six feet seven, but what a competitor and uh, athlete. You know, you realize, you look at this game, and the score is 13 12. They were in six minutes, approximately. And um, this team is shooting about 75% or 80% almost, and they still haven't scored that much. That's because the defense is so good, they're concentrating. The next first in defense in the NBA, Baltimore fourth. Baltimore with the ball. Chenier, number 45, 21 is Clark, guarded by number 10, Frazier. Reardon, guarded by Bradley, 24. Reardon, number six. DeBusher really leaning on Unsel, who gets the ball now. Look at him push. Wow. 24 seconds. Mm, don't see that too often. That was a direct result of good defense, though. The Knicks are playing very good defense and they're trapping sometimes in other words when I said trapping I mean that they're double teaming the guy will get they try to get a guy back to a corner then two guys get on him real quick but it's only a momentary thing you you get on him real quick if you don't get the ball then you go back to your man so that he doesn't have a, an outlet pass the outlet pass by Unsel to Hayes pace slowed down but Reardon drives penetrating out it comes Hayes tapping at the Clark of Baltimore Baltimore trailing by one now they lead by two Beautiful timing by Unsold, and he'll go to the foul line. Let's see it again. Right through the middle there. Now, you got to remember, Wesley Unsold is about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, about 250. And uh, a lot of guys think he ought to be in the NFL instead of here. I bet he'd be great there, too. Unsold fifth in the NBA on rebounds, averaging 16, eighth in field goal percentage, 50%. At the foul line, Willis Reed committed the foul, his first. The Busher has two personals for New York. And now the Bullets lead by two, 16-14. When you consider that Ansel and Hayes both are in the top 10 in the league in rebounding, that's a, pr that's a pretty good indication that they're playing pretty good defense, and uh, they're not giving too many second shots. Now Dave DeBusher found the range from a spot in the corner. Seventh tie of the game with 5.40 to go in the first quarter. All this from Maryland. College Park. Right here. Chicken, chicken. Out of bounds call there across the end line. So the Knickerbockers take it over. The guards are 21 today. Monroe, number 10, Frazier. 24, Bradley cut across the top of the key, but Monroe gets the ball, gets to the Busher. The Busher misses, but is fouled on the play. And result, that foul was a direct result of playing without the ball. What Dave DeBusher did was went to the weak side, which is away from the ball. Gave his man a fake like he's going toward the foul line. He went toward the baseline underneath the bucket. And to time it so that his man is a half a step around him when he gets around the pick. The pick being set by the, by Willis Reed. He, he ran his man into Willis Reed as he came back to try to get a shot underneath. And that's why uh, he was fouled. Playing without the ball. Dave DeBusher now makes the Knicks the leader by a score of 17-16 with 5.20 to go in the first quarter. 
Baltimore with the ball. Chenier number 45. Here is Archie Clark to Wes Unso. Over to Busher. Busher's defense helping force Unsel to be really off the mark. We got double team Unsel there. That's what the Knicks are doing. They're double teaming whenever possible. Bradley has it back to Frazier. Frazier guarded by Reardon now. Around comes Monroe. Chenier knocks it away. Here are the bullets. Mike Reardon. Clark ahead of him. Clark trips. The ball is not lost out of bounds. New York has it. I think Clark thinks he got tripped by somebody else. I <laughs> sort of agree with him. Baltimore now with four turnovers. New York one. New York leading 17-16. Reed. Hayes switching off to guard Bradley. The busher over the screen. Beautiful. Now, the the Knicks are working to get that type of shot because they have great shooters that can shoot from 15 to 17 feet. But they still have to go to the basket. Uh, if they don't, they end up not getting good offensive position and not any offensive rebound. So you see Frazier sometimes, mostly Frazier and Monroe done the penetrating. Last basket by the penetrating. Spitting jump shot. Good penetration. One in. Over Hayes. Mm. Hayes had scored the last bucket. Frazier now has eight points. Last night he scored 22 against Baltimore at the Garden in New York. Now the bullets are walking up, and that's a bad sign. Because they are, are so much better when they run. Five turnovers. And the busher. Now they're walking it up, and they're walking away from the game if they're going to walk up. They have to run. The busher with last four shots he's made them. He now has nine points for the Knicks, who lead 23-18. Chenier. Beautiful. That wasn't bad for a team to walk down. <laughs> Earl Monroe. But to consistently play well, the bullets have to run. Let's look at Chenier's drive to the hoop as Gene Shue is off the bench. And and that's a tough effort, see. Now he's dribbling left-handed. He's a right-handed player. He's taking it up. And he's going to shoot it right-handed. It really is a tough shot. That is a tough shot because you're going, you're rotating away from the normal shooting procedure. Dave DeBusher is one for three at the foul line. He was fouled by Anselu, now has two personals. 24 to 20, New York. And I noticed that uh, DeBusher is guarding Ansel rather than Willis Reed. Willis Reed's guarding Elvin Hayes. All right, there's DeBusher trying to help out on Clark. Trying is right, because he's tough. Monroe. Ansel trying to get that release quickly, but Reed was there to intimidate him. Now we have Reardon giving back to Clark. Clark guarded by Bradley. And New York is doing a good job of uh, taking away uh, the Baltimore fast break by choking off that lead pass. Hit the open man. That was Monroe. Now the bullets, as I say, are walking the ball up. And for them, this is a bad sign because they have to run. Archie Clark, number 21, given in some room by Monroe. Reardon closely guarded by Bradley. Finally gets away. Has it. Hayes guarded by Reed along the lane. The busher on the rebound. And the Knicks are moving. Frazier. No one there to rebound except Hayes, Reardon, and Unsel. So the bullets have it. Clark, 21, bouncing to Chenier. Walt Frazier. Couldn't control it. So we have a minute 58 to go in the first quarter. Let's again watch Archie Clark penetrating. That's going to the basket. So the New York up. Knickerbockers in the first quarter have a 26 to 22 lead. We'll be back after this message from one of our sponsors. NBA Story, NBA.com. We're in Baltimore. Other games today in the NBA. Milwaukee at Houston, 2.55 start. Buffalo at Boston tonight at 8. Chicago at Phoenix, 2 this afternoon. And Cleveland at Los Angeles tonight at 7 o'clock. Right now, uh, it's the Knicks in the lead. And this week, there are some key games of special interest to you fans. Get out and see them if you can. Chicago at Milwaukee, Tuesday, March 6th at 8 p.m. New York at Philadelphia, Wednesday, March 7th at 8.05 p.m. And Boston at Los Angeles, Friday, March 9th at 8 p.m. 
And we're by in Boston next Sunday for the New York Knickerbocker Boston Celtic game. And, and that'll be fun, uh, Bill, to do that game a week from today. Jerry Lucas, the magician, has come into the game as Bill Bradley and Wes Unsel. Ooh, you talk about. No, Wes did a good job acting there. Uh, he's up for Emmy, so? too. Oh, yeah. Uh, if Bill's not is, that strong, right? No, Bradley bounce off of him. Here it is. We can't do it right now to show you a replay of the shoving as Archie Clark has the ball. It was a foul on Bradley. Baltimore hitting 58% New York gets a 77%. Unsold over the busher. The busher rebounds. Frazier number 10. If you just joined us, we have a minute 30 to go in the first quarter. Rebound comes off to Frazier. What a player. One of my favorites. Five for seven. He has ten points as we look at Archie Clark guarded by Monroe. This is Hayes, Elvin Hayes, number 11, guarded by Jerry Lucas. Number 32. And Jerry must have put some of his magical whammy on that shot because it came, went in and came out. Now, Hayes normally would turn the other way to shoot the shot, but he turned this way. He normally turns the other way for his favorite shot. He's turning the other way. And when, when a guy's playing good defense on you, it makes you do things that you don't want to do. That's why the shot came close but didn't go in. You see, when you throw a guy off defensively, it's not necessarily blocking a shot or making it miss by a lot. It's making it miss just a little bit. Now, Hayes likes to turn the other way. Uh, Lucas took that away, and he had to turn the opposite way he liked to. So he, was, he broke a habit that he has. And so that's why the shot went in and out. It comes so close, but that's all it takes, just a little bit. It's still a missed shot. Elvin Hayes, one of the big men, hitting two for two at the foul line. Comes back to the opposite end of the court now with a score 28-24. Coming up to the one-minute mark, first quarter. Bradley feeding to Busher. Stan Love is in the ballgame for Baltimore, number 13. Boy, he isn't superstitious. Off it goes to Archie Clark, number 21. Unsold is getting a rest for the first time in the game. Chenier, number 45, who directed Love to go into the lane. Outside it was Hayes, back to Chenier. Monroe with the rebound. There's Love passing him by, picking up Dave DeBusher in the corner. DeBusher on a move. Beautiful. And a feed from Monroe. And Love didn't know where he was. Dave DeBusher hurt something. I think it's his hip. Yes, he's in pain. Dave DeBusher to the right with 12 points is pulled up short. No basket. We have an injury timeout. As Bill pointed out, DeBusher had pulled up short. Let's see it again. Danny Whalen right there administering to him. Now he went up for the shot. It's a tough shot. Let's see how he came. Oh, that's where he heard it. He came down on that uh, on that foot. And, that... Bill and as you can see, he'll pull up here. Dave That's smart. I, I've had that kind of effect. The, the oh. joint, like it's want to jump out of socket. Oh, it's got to hurt. He's over there uh, limbering up his right leg on the bench as his teammates have it, Frazier. Now Jerry Lucas as Phil Jackson has taken to Busher's place. He's along the lane, wearing number 18 on the blue jersey. And Hayes on Frazier commits the foul. To Busher now walking along the New York Knickerbocker bench. Uh, Danny Whalen was walking him along, and now he, this is always going to have him sit down once again. Now, they'll probably put a little ice on it, and uh, he may be able to play again today. It's one of those kind of things that, that hurt just a very short time. Now, where he hurt is when he, come down, when he came down, and he jarred the joint. There, right at the, at the hip there. Uh, it's almost like it's jarring the loose. Fraser made the foul shots. He has 12 points. The Busher has 12 also as we come to the end of the first quarter with the New York Knickerbockers leading by eight. 32 to 24. We'll be back for the second quarter in a minute. One of the favorite calls of the over 19,000 to jam Madison Square Garden when the Knicks play is defense, Bill. Right. Well, defense comes to really comes to eight in a game like today. Both teams have to be a bit tired. They played a tough game last night and they're here uh, this afternoon. So that uh, defense is a thing that if you work hard, uh, your timing doesn't have to be that good. 
uh, the natural things don't have to come fall into place. You can just work hard at it, and you, if you do the fundamental things, you can stay in a ball game. And so both these teams are good defensive teams. Talk about a beautifully timed, uh, highly arched shot. Lucas you know did it. The result of good defense is that you see spectacular shots because you have to make spectacular shots to get them off. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't just shoot your normal shots because the guys are playing good defense. Now, the Knicks, I noticed, uh, will put pressure on the ball, and the minute the guy gets rid of it, they, uh, they get back and help each other out. And the Knicks are running more than the uh, bullets are, and they don't have to. But what they're doing is trying to get up and get the shot before the bullet defense can set up. Now, we got uh, Hayes on Frazier. So that means that Reed has somebody a little. And so that these are the kind of mismatches you want to get. And as I've said many times, that some people think if you get a big guy and a little guy, the, the thing to do is to get the ball to the big guy inside. That's not necessarily true because a guard like Frazier has just as good a chance of making a shot over a guy like Hayes outside as the big guy does take the ball inside. Plus, if you uh, have eliminated the three-second uh, or the chance of an offensive foul, the big guy running over the little guy because the referees usually like to call that. All right, Bill, uh, that was Phil Jackson's third foul. Archie Clark. Archie Clark. 5.40 to go, first half, 44-37. Clark with six points. Heminger driving on Clark. You know what's interesting, uh, Chris, is that um, the Bulls are a very, very young team. They're one of the younger teams in the NBA. I think that Archie Clark is the only one 30 or over. And uh, that's not bad. You know, they got Reardon uh, is under 30, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Hayes, until They got Phil Janiers, only 22. Uh, Kevin Porter, their first substitute, mm -hmm. 21 and 22. Uh, you go right down the bench, and they're a young ball club. Robert, the oldest one would be Trez Van and Flynn Robinson. Oh, yes. Uh, Trez Van, uh, I, I had to give him, before the game, I had to give him a uh, greeting from one of his old classmates, my father. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You needle him pretty good. It's good he's not a little taller and bigger. Okay, <laughs> Archie Clark, the bullets, Unsell rebounding. Bradley tapping it away, who's back in the Nick lineup. Frazier, guarded by Reardon. There's a confrontation. Willis Reed to Bradley, open. Ooh, Chenier, 45. Up left, pass to Clark. And the bullets are starting to run again. Gene Shue off the bench on the far side as we have about 5-10 to go, first half, 45-37. Now, Archie Clark is, um, he gets them running because he likes to get the ball up fast. And they can, uh, the, the young guys, like Shanir and Porter, when they're in there, they have a tendency to forget, you know, and to uh, make sure that you don't make mistakes, you see. And, and, and trying to avoid mistakes, they, they tend to walk the ball up. There's Dick Barnett, a real veteran. Taking Bill Bradley's place, Bradley has three personal fouls. So the Knicks line up seven Memminger, 19 Reed, 10 Frazier, 32 Lucas, and 12 Barnett. It's six Reardon for Baltimore, 45 Chenier, 21 Clark, 11 Hayes, and Unsel number 41. Now, you know, Barnett's a substitute. He's a guy that uh, has a great attitude. Plus the fact he's probably the smartest uh, basketball player on, on, uh, when it comes to the, the knowledge of the game on the Knickerbocker team. In fact, he, I think he would make a fine coach. I'm just going to ask you that. Will he ever have a chance, you think? Oh, no? yes. Uh, pro probably. I hope so. Because he, he, he really knows what he's doing out there. A little bit physical there on the part and, of Elvin Hayes. You know, he comes off the bench. He's a guy that started for many, many years. He comes off the bench, never complains. You know, it's one of those, those attitudes that you have to have to be a substitute. Uh, it's what I always call a professional attitude. At the line, number 12, Dick Barnett, who went to Tennessee State. He did not play last night. You want to hear something interesting win. about Dick Barnett? Uh-huh. Uh, when he left, when he started in the pros, he had not graduated from, from college. He has four years to go to get a Ph.D. Now, when he started in the league, he didn't graduate. He hadn't graduated from college in his class. I think when he left Tennessee, he was about a, a sophomore or junior in his grades. Uh, uh, you know, in his uh, class standings with the, the academic um, requirements. And now he's four units away from his Ph.D. hope some of the youngsters hearing that, uh, Bill, will take note. Well, that takes dedication. Well, no, I mean, a lot of guys don't, don't. don't graduate. And here's a guy that didn't graduate with his class and has since went on to educate himself. 
Jerry Lucas making the last field goal with six points. Elvin Hayes has it for Baltimore over Reed. And tough defense. In fact, too much. Reed shoves Hayes, and he'll go to the foul line. There's Willis Reed, who played last night for the first time in seven games, was the starter here today, and you see the uh, harness on his left knee. His problem now is not the knee. It's the ointment that he used on the knee, which apparently got on the instep of the same leg on the foot. And uh, that's burned him a little bit too much. Did you ever have that happen, Bill? Yes, he uh, was trying to do a little home remedy there. <laughs> I told him today that's that's rookie stuff that you go around and, and hurt yourself at home. I said you're supposed to know better than that. All right, here's number ten, Walt Frazier, guarded by Reardon. Elvin Hayes has ten points now for Baltimore as we're coming up to the four-minute mark of the first half, 47-41, New York. Barnett, Chenier, guarding him. Lucas, guarded by Unsel. Frazier. What a beautiful shooting motion with that hand. The form is almost perfect, isn't it, Bill? Always, always on balance. Quick hands. You know, he's bigger than uh, than most guards, too, because he's a tall 6'4", or maybe a short 6'5". Walt Frazier, who likes pretty cars, pretty girls, and winning basketball. <laughs> Frazier's first personal. So it'll be Chenier going to the foul line. Chenier last night with 18 points, helping in the Baltimore 97-75 victory. First free throw, good, with 3.41 to go in the first half. 49-42, 49-43. The end of the first quarter, the next led 32-24. Clark, putting pressure on Meminger. Now, Meminger is not a very good outside shooter. And so you would normally ask, well, why would he put pressure on, on Meminger way outside? Well, because Meminger is running the offense. He's setting everybody up. And, and you've got to make that pass a tough pass. So that, um, so that he can't give the guys uh, the ball wherever they want it when they play without the ball. Yes, that was a good call because he did jump in. See, uh, the defensive man, is, it, there's really no position to do anything because he's up in the air. Now, if Barnett had gone straight up, he might have still gotten, he might have gotten the foul, but he jumped in just to make sure. Earl Monroe getting ready to come in for the New York Knicks. Frazier trying to steal it, he does. Barnett way ahead, but covered by Reardon. So it goes to Reed in the lane. Reed up and in. If you notice, Walt Frazier's out uh, when he's bringing the ball up. Meminger was down and had the lead on the break, but he wasn't looking at the ball. So he was just running without looking. And you should always know where the ball is. Uh, Meminger was running with his head down, and Frazier was uh, yelling to him because he had a chance for a layup. The only time to keep your head down is in golf, right, Bill? Is that the way I play it? Well, that was some move there. Paul oh, Frazier. He has 18 points already today for the New York Knicks. 53-45. Let's see Frazier's last move. Now he beats Chenier. He has him here. Gets him past. Gets him out. Of the, now he's got to go by. And he goes between Chenier and, Hay, and Hayes. Which was a pretty good move, I guess. Hey, or log on to the NBA store at NBA.com. Don't forget, later today, award-winning American sportsman. 4.15 Eastern, 3.15 Central, 4 Pacific, as Dancing Harry has a little speed here in Maryland at Cold Field House. And American sportsman will be followed by the Howard Cosell Sports Magazine Show. And, Bill, that should be another interesting episode by Mr. Cosell, talking about the problems of amateur oh, athletics. You think he was ever an amateur athlete? Beg your pardon? <laughs> you think Howard was ever an amateur athlete? Uh, <laughs> Gianelli. John Gianelli from the University of Pacific, a uh, rookie, is in the New York lineup, number 40. Elvin Hayes is guarding him, and he's giving him a little early treatment, sort of shoving him. Yeah, see, that's let him know that, hey, I'm out here. Yeah, good afternoon. 
Monroe's shot is rebounded by Unsaw. Unsaw to Mike Reardon. Reardon gives to Chenier, passing by and shooting. <laughs> Minute 58 remaining in the first half. Chenier now with 10 points. He's guarding Meminger. So far, the difference in this game has been the fact that Baltimore has not ran fast break. They're, other than that, they're playing pretty good ball, but they're playing, you might say, out of the element. Because if the Knicks are not out playing that much, the boats are not running. There's one of our heroes scoring, Bill. Dick <laughs> Barnett. Well, see, I, I like uh, Dick Barnett because uh, it's nice to see somebody my age still out there doing it. <laughs> he told me you were older. No, he may be, a, oh. he may be a, a six months or a year older than me. Oh, okay. Mike Reardon for the Baltimore Bullets. 12 points for Mike. Meminger of New York. Coming up to the one-minute mark, Lucas from 30 feet. Bill Chenier. Beautiful. A Bill Russell-type left-handed hook shot. I never wish you were there like that. <laughs> 12 points. Five for seven from the field. Goaltending, says Red Holtzman. Jerry Lucas puts it in. That's not all he said either. <laughs> 35 seconds remaining. First half, 57-51. New York leading. They're in blue. Baltimore with the predominantly white uniform. Reardon, six. Brown Hayes, 11. Here comes Clark. Clark killing a little clock time. With six seconds of a 24-second clock, he makes it now 13 seconds left in the first half. He ran Dean Memberger into uh, Wesley Unsell three times in that one play, and that smart. Janeer guarding Monroe. Final shot coming up. Whoops. Jerry Lucas commits a foul. And Red Holtzman is off the deck again. I should say off the chair. As he should have been. So the ball will go to the opposite end, and Unsel will shoot slightly to the left of center at the foul line. In five meetings this year, New York has topped 100 points once. Baltimore, not at all. Baltimore has won two of the five games played. But both teams uh, a little more than enough to go over the 100 mark as we approach halftime. One second left on the clock. 57-54, and Unsel makes it 57-55. Long to Meminger. Stolen by Chenier, and time has gone in the first half. That's the end of the first half. We'll return with halftime activities here at Coldfield House in College Park, Maryland, right after this message and a word from our local stations. Greatest game. Dave DeBush is not going to play the second half. Uh, they're going to x-ray his uh, hip when he gets back to New York. But I think uh, out of good judgment and common sense, they're not taking any chances because they got to try to get him ready for the playoffs because they pretty much established the fact they are in the playoffs. And it's better to, to take the time and make sure he's healthy when they start really playing down to the crunch. For New York, it's Bradley, 24. 21 today is Earl Monroe, 10 is Frazier, 19 is Willis Reed, 32 Jerry Lucas, while for Baltimore, 41 is Wes Unsel, 45 is Chenier, 6 is Mike Reardon, 21 is Clark, and 11 is Elvin Hayes. Dave DeBusher did not even come out of the Knickerbocker dressing room, He's probably dressed and perhaps flying back ahead of the team. 11-12 remaining in the third quarter. New York leading 57-55. No scoring yet here in the second half. Monroe into Willis Reed. Beautiful. What happened, he, the two guys cut off of him, and he faked to both of them, and, and the defensive men all reacted. So they left him by himself because the big guy has to back off to help out when those guys are crisscrossing off the big off the center. Willis Reed with eight points today, guarding Hayes at the moment, knocking the ball away and also holding. Part of <laughs> almost like to be part of Elvin's arm too. Third personal. Third personal on Willis Reed. The Knickerbockers, Jackson with three, 
Bradley with three while Baltimore not in foul trouble. Just received word that Dave DeBush will fly back to the team for x-rays of a hip. This year against New York in the five previous games, Unsel and Hayes, Unsel has scored 14 points a game, Hayes 16, Unsel has had 15 rebounds, Hayes 13. That's quite a duo that Bill talked at length about prior to the start of the game. They're in the lineup, but can't stop Monroe's shot of New York. Eight points for Earl as it's 61-56. Monroe guarding Archie Clark. Long pass into Hayes. Oh, what a spinning jump shot. 11 points now for Elvin Hayes. Monroe and Frazier outside. This is Lucas. And nearly tore the nets off. Ten points for the magician, Jerry Lucas. Unsel comes off with the ball. Willis Reed, quickly to Monroe. Unsel. Baltimore running, Clark. Reardon. pretty good shape. They get the, the good shot and the timing is good. But when they, uh, as I've said so many times before, what you try to do against the bullets is cut off that outlet pass and make sure they bring the ball up slowly. Then you can play with it. But they have to run, though. They are tough. Unsel with another rebound. Clark has it for the bullets. Clark slowing down play for the moment, guarded by Monroe. 63-60, New York. Third quarter. About nine minutes to go. Unsel cross court pass to Reardon, but it was hard. He is six for eight from the field. There's a total of 16 points, or rather, he's eight of 10. Bradley. That was the first field goal by Bill Bradley today, as the Baltimore Bullets have called for. A timeout. We have eight minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the third quarter. New York leading 65-62 in Maryland. The NBA store at NBA.com. ABC Sports proud to bring you this NBA basketball game from the campus of the University of Maryland today with the Knicks leading by one, 6.42 to go in the third quarter. Next Sunday, our NBA game will originate at Boston Garden. We look forward to that meeting between the Celtics and the New York Knickerbockers, 1-2 in their division. So the battle goes on for the Eastern Conference and Western Conference. And a reminder of games tonight, Buffalo at Boston, Chicago at Phoenix, Cleveland at Los Angeles, Detroit at Portland. On ABC Today, it'll be American Sportsman following this telecast and then Howard Cosell's Sports Magazine show. And times are different on the West Coast, so you uh, viewers, check your time and station. Archie Clark of the Baltimore Bullets. 25 minutes ago, Baltimore led 16 to 13. Now they trail by one. Reardon has the ball guarded by Lucas. Into Clark. Clark around Monroe. Double team. Saved by Hayes, number 11. Lucas on the rebound. To Frazier. To Reed. To Monroe. Well, a big man was in the middle. That was some great passes. And Ralph Frazier said the whole thing at the behind the back pass to Reed. And right away he passed to Monroe underneath. And he got fouled by Archie Clark. Puts a three, three point play. Earl Monroe now with 11 points for the next 70 to 66. Coming up to the six minute mark, third quarter. Phil Chenier, number 45. with another rebound. Jerry uh, filling in beautifully for the injured Dave DeBusher. To what extent, we don't know as uh, x-rays will be taken when he gets back to New York. Chenier stealing it. 70, 68. Chenier, a press now put on by Baltimore. Frazier has it. Him Monroe will break it. Earl the 
Pearl. 72-68. Monroe now coming on strong. Seven points in this quarter. He has a total of 13. You know, uh, er uh, Earl has made a tremendous adjustment in, uh, in moving away from Baltimore. He has to completely alter his style, and it takes a great amount of confidence to, to make the change the way he did it from a high scorer to a guy that doesn't score very much but plays an altogether different ball game. You have to have a tremendous amount of confidence in your ability to be able to make that adjustment because, you know, if, you had, if he had believed that the only thing he could do was score, then he wouldn't have been able to make the adjustment. And he has made a tremendous adjustment in that he doesn't shoot nearly as much. Uh, he has to play team ball. He doesn't do as much one-on-one. -on -one. He still has the ability, but the team he plays for calls for a different type of game, and he's made that. So uh, as some people had worried about would he be able to play on a team-oriented uh, situation like the Knickerbockers. In other words, you'd tab him uh, with the same word as you did Barnett earlier, that he's a professional. Right. Reardon. Lucas comes off of the ball to Monroe, whom Bill was talking about, number 21 today. Seventh rebound by Lucas. Reed around Unsel. Hayes blocks it. Elvin Hayes. What an athlete. One of the superstars of last Sunday's show here on ABC. There were no superstars on that show. <laughs> How many? None. <laughs> On Willis Reed. So Ansel gets credit for the field goal, and uh, he has a total of 10 points now as Lucas from way out. And a battle under the basket between Ansel and Reed. I told you a while ago that Reed did the goaltending, got the goaltending call. Right now it's a foul on Unsold and it's going to be inbounded by Frazier to Earl the Pearl. He's looking for jersey number 15. Who'd want to steal a basketball jersey? <laughs> Willis Reed now with 10 points. Coming up to three and a half minute mark, third quarter, 74-70. You just joined us, 32-24 at the end of the first quarter, 57-55 at halftime. New York leading. Unsold, stealing it away. Lucas again, getting great position around the bucket to pull him down. Eighth rebound for Lucas. Most of them coming here in the second half. Hayes, Clark, 21. Lucas again to Walt Frazier. Willis Reed up ahead. Frazier slowing it down because he wanted to call timeout. First getting into his attacking zone. And then he could inbound the ball there. When the play is resumed with 2.53 to go. Third quarter, 74 to 7. Bill and I will be back in a minute. Day's greatest game. Two minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the third quarter, 74-70. The Knicks leading, and this is the sixth and final regular season game between the Knicks and the Baltimore Bullets. And they have been rivals the last several years. New York with 20 uh, losses and Baltimore with only 24. In fact, speaking of losses, as we look at the Knickerbockers, New York has lost only four games at Madison Square Garden. One being the loss to Baltimore last night. What a fantastic record at home. 51 and 20 overall. Baltimore 43 and 24. Unsold and Willis Reed. Their statistics up to this point. We mentioned Lucas on rebounds. He has a total of eight. He has seven in this quarter. Now guarded by Elvis, Elvis Hay, Elvin Hayes as Bill Bradley's shot. Rebounded by Unsold, Unsold to Clark. Chenier, Reardon, and Hayes make up the Baltimore lineup. It's Lucas, Reed, Bradley, Monroe, and Frazier for New York. Reed to Frazier.
until long to Clark. Wes Unsel. Within two now, Unsel has 12 points. Monroe to Bradley. Reed. You make it look easy. Earl Monroe. 15 points for Earl. So in the backcourt, you've got Monroe, 15, 9 in this quarter, and Frazier, number 10, has, let's see, a total of 22 points. Frazier, number 10. Monroe. Reed. Blocked by Anso. Good defense. Quick release to Clark. Chenier. Clark. 76-74. New York. seconds left in the third quarter. Baltimore can tie it up if they can move up court and get a field goal. The last tie was 16 to 16. going to come into the Baltimore lineup. Archie Clark getting a rest. Now what Kevin Porter will do or, or can do is penetrate. The, ball, the bullets haven't been penetrating or running and maybe they can uh, do one or the other because if they do that they can pull away. Porter. Good defensive play by Walt Frazier. Lucas to Bradley and the buzzer ending the third quarter here at Cole Fieldhouse in College Park, Maryland. So with the big fourth quarter coming up, we'll take a pause for about a minute with the score New York 76, Baltimore 74. Yeah. Back again in Baltimore. This is one of the Baltimore Bullet photographers. There Just you took your picture, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to you want to get a, get get the picture taken. That's right. That's right. Here we go. Fourth quarter, 76-74, New York leading. Hayes and Lucas giving it their all, but Baltimore controls it. Tiny, Kevin Porter, a rookie, to Chenier, 45. Records of these two teams against each other: three for New York, two for Baltimore. Did Porter do a nice little move? Eighth tie of the game, 76 all. Brad Kevin Porter went underneath, uh, penetrated the bucket like I expected that he would do. Bill Jackson in the lineup, number 18, along with number 10, Frazier, 24, Bradley. Frazier got the, Lucas, 32, Memager, number 7. For Baltimore, at the start of the fourth quarter, it's 10 Porter, 45 Chenier, 6 Reardon, 11 Hayes, and 41 Unseld. That's a great pass. Uh, Frazier went for the steal, uh, and then Chenier penetrated, and they had to be picked up and uh, made a great pass. 14 points and 14 rebounds. A steal by Little Porter. That tiny little guy. And it's going to be Baltimore's ball. Jeff Porter on the far side. He's nearly as short as referee Don Murphy. Right now, Chenier must have caught an elbow in the midsection. May have. There he is. 
Here are the third quarter statistics. New York shooting is off a little bit in the field, uh, up a little bit at the free throw line. Right. Uh, they're having a rough time at the, at the, at the foul line. 55% is Tied. not good. 35 and total rebounds for each team. Stan Love has come into the Baltimore lineup wearing number 13. Number six is worn by Reardon and at one time by Bill Russell. Never 13 by Bill Russell. Right, William? Right. <laughs> Jackson faking Love. Hayes. To Kev Porter. Six feet tall. Only by comparison is he tiny. Oh, what a pass. Janair. So the little guys put Baltimore ahead. 80 to 78. You see, you see they're, they're, uh, they're penetrating and then get it and, and making the New York Our defense commit. 10, Porter, but they would, uh, they, I still think they'd be a lot better if they were running rather than just. Uh, so with 9.52 to go in the game, Baltimore leads 80 to 78 as Bradley tried to tie it up. It comes off. Jackson knocking it away. Picks it up. Still has trouble. Bradley has it. Lucas Padley. Meminger. Hayes gets it. Hayes supporter. Four fouls on Phil Jackson of the New York Knickerbockers, number 18, as we look at Meminger, number seven. Actually, the foul was on Dean Meminger, number seven, his first. He is guarding Porter, number 10, 21 Clark. Oh. That penetration. 16 points for Archie Clark. What a young man. The University of Minnesota. Proud of his Gopher basketball team. And Monroe. Here's Clark directing traffic. And Lucas has hurt himself a little bit. Yeah. Stan Love has it. Back out to Porter. And Porter charges. That was a great defensive play by Dean Meminger. Plus, uh, after he got to make sure he got the uh, uh, foul call, he gave a little acting job. But he had great defensive position. Porter has four personals now. Let's see a slow motion of Jerry Lucas hitting the deck to the left. 32 is Lucas. There he goes. Mm. Appears to be okay already. Uh, the Knickerbockers are in the first half. Lost Dave DeBusher. Entry to a hip. They'll x-ray it when they get back to New York to see just to what extent Dave injured it. We hope not seriously. Meminger number seven for the next. Phil Jackson in the lineup along with Jerry Lucas and Walt Frazier. Plus Meminger. Reed is getting ready to come back in. Monroe. Unsel quickly to Clark. Clark saving it. Giving it to Porter, Porter to Reardon, back out to Clark. Coming up seven seconds on the 24 second clock. Unsel back outside to Clark. Now it's restarted, so they have 20 seconds in which to shoot. Coming up to the eight minute mark of the game. And the Knickerbockers are using three guard offense. They're using uh, Mibinger, Monroe, and Frazier which it makes for a small team and, and Lucas and uh, Phil Jackson. That's, that's a small team in Nickelbacher here about the Very small team. Jerry Lucas now leaves the lineup and uh, he injured himself a while ago because complaining of a little pain on the bench now. Reed is back in number 19 as we look at Meminger 7. Frazier 10. Guarded by Reardon. Stan Love 
Love rebound. Love from University of Oregon. Second year as a professional. Chenier getting ready to come in for Baltimore. Clark. And the Bullets have extended their lead to four. 18 points for Clark. Amateur to Earl Monroe. Jackson now has six points. In comes Hayes. Love leaves the lineup, and Chenier is in. Love foul Jackson on the play. It was Love's second foul. Jackson. Now the Baltimore lineup. Unsel, Clark, Hayes, Chenier, and Reardon. They're starters. For the Knicks, it's Reed, Monroe, Meminger, Jackson, and Frazier. Still the three-guard team for New York. Knocked away by Meminger, taken by Jackson, back to Meminger. Losing it to Clark. Chenier, way ahead. But it goes to Hayes. And the Big E. That's that old high percentage shot. <laughs> Fifteen points for Elvin Hayes. Six minutes, 45 seconds to go in the game. Jackson for New York. Baltimore leading by three. Reardon to Clark. Fourth foul on Archie Clark. Another great defensive play by Dean Meminger. Although uh, he was still moving uh, when uh, the contact was made. Well, he had the right idea anyway. Baltimore Mullets call for a timeout with six and a half minutes left in the game and the Knicks down by three. Game. Right now, Don Murphy, one of the NBA officials, is getting some smelling salts. It's very warm in here. In fact, Bill, I won't need a sauna tonight or a steam bath. Capacity crowd of over 13,000. And uh, the two officials, well, you can just see, worked hard. And he looks pale. <laughs> That's from all the pressure. Oh, sure. Right. That from a former coach, Bill Russell. It is hotter than a, in here. Hotter than a what? That's what, I thought, that's what I thought you said. A little imagination, right? <laughs> All right. 86-83, Baltimore leading, coming up 6-10 to go in the game. It's a great rival, Baltimore and New York. And this can be a preview of the first round of the playoffs in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. ABC will be doing six first-round playoff games. Excuse me. How many, Jeff Mason? 16 total. 16 total playoff games, many of them prime time. I mentioned Jeff Mason, he's our producer. Who? <laughs> Larry Cam is our director. 17 points now for Reardon. 8 of 11 from the field. And the Bullets now lead by five with six minutes to go. Here's Frazier of New York. Biggest lead on the next, and knocked away by Hayes. A foul on Earl Monroe, his third. So let's see, Lucas getting ready to come back in. Meminger as well. Big game for both teams because of the loss column and the new setup in playoffs, where the record determines what teams will play in the first round, in the loss column in particular. Reardon's hook shot, rebounded by Walt Frazier. Ooh. Little bump and go. Lucas in 32, Meminger 7. 
Five fouls on Archie Clark with five minutes, ten seconds to go. And I see when they play, they Frazier push more than Monroe did on the other play, and they call just the officer. You know. And the one thing that the players always say about refereeing is that they don't really care too much how the guy calls them as long as he's consistent. Then you can then you can adjust to it. Uh -huh. But if they're going to be inconsistent, then that causes confusion. And this is when guys complain about the referee. And this has not been a overly well refereed game. Second hasn't been, been hasn't been very good. <laughs> Twenty four points today for Frazier. Seven rebounds, five assists. Chenier guarded by Frazier. Reardon guarded by Dick Barnett, number 12. Unsel is guarded by Jerry Lucas, who switches off. Unsel goes to the bucket. Over Reed. 90 to 85. Baltimore trying to gain two in the loss column, which relates to playoffs coming up in a matter of two games, having won last night in New York. Until today, 16 points, 16 rebounds. Uh, Dick Barnett. Four points for Barnett. These two teams would both need tomorrow off. This is a tough, tough game. And if a game last night was anywhere near as tough as this, these guys are going to need, gonna need some rest because this has been a tough game all the way, all day. Still, well, these two teams have met for the fifth. If they meet again in the first round, will have met for the fifth straight season. And the Knicks uh, have won three of the past four. Baltimore's only victory coming in the Eastern Conference Finals in 1971. So, not much love lost between these two when it comes to basketball competition. Yeah, I think it, the, the, the rivalry really started in 69 when the, when the Bullets finished first and the Knicks beat them four straight in the playoffs. And uh, they've been smarting on that every, uh, about that ever since, you know. So they, uh, I think they'd rather beat the Knicks than anybody. Baltimore, Chenier. Beautiful. Foul call on Jerry Lucas. The foul is on number 32, Jerry Lucas. His third personal. How to penetrate by a hardship case. He goes right in, and it, what I noticed about Chenier is that he always keeps his eye on the target, no matter what happens. He never took his eye off the bucket. Uh, Lucas came, and he bumped him, and he hit him, and he kept his eye right on the target. Always keeps that body too, seemingly on a drive like that between the ball and uh, the defender. And that's tough sometimes when you got the big guys with long arms, especially. Mm -hmm. Lucas to Walt Frazier. Reed fakes up and no good. Foul call on Elvin Hayes, number 11. Phil Mahalik, Ian Hayes, Don Murphy fourth, officiating. Fourth, That's the fourth, fourth foul on, the on Hayes. Clark has five. Hayes has four. New York. Willis Reed, shooting two. Jackson uh, with four. Well, here's Reed for New York. 11 points for Reed and nine rebounds. Now New York trails by four. 3.28 to go in the ball game. New York still has to play Boston twice, including next Sunday's game, which will televise. As Clark makes it 95-89. 20 points for Clark. American Sportsman and Howard Cassell follow our telecast here on ABC. Walt Frazier, his second personal. Bill Jackson comes into the next lineup, and Lucas leaves. Bill Jackson, number 18, returns to the next lineup for Jerry Lucas. That's where he got him. That New was York a good call. Take time out. And uh, Reardon did what you're supposed to do after you get bumped to make sure that they don't miss it. New York Knickerbockers call for a timeout. We'll pause for this message. 
Financial presents Pistons basketball. On the left and on the right, Phil Mahelic, the two NBA officials, getting a little smelling salts here, coming out for the final two minutes and 53 seconds of the game. It is hot in here. Ninety-five, eighty-nine. the Baltimore Bullets in the lead. The end of our telecast from College Park, Maryland, will be bringing you American Sportsman. A chance to watch David Ladd, Maury Wills, and Kirk Gowdy. And then Howard Cosell is on the Sports Magazine. On the West Coast, he will follow our basketball telecast. He'll be discussing possible solutions to the problems of amateur athletics. Next Saturday, by World of Sports, along with the Professional Bowlers Tour, which will originate at Madison Square Garden, the BPAA United States Open. Clark will go to the foul line now. Second personal on Dean Numminger, number seven. Time running out. Nick's trailing by six. 2.39 to go. Twenty-two points now for Archie Clark with eight assists. Dean Mamager guarded by Clark. Dick Barnett of the Knicks. Two twenty-four to go. Jackson. Frazier. Five seconds shooting clock. Wow. Frazier. Ninety-seven. Ninety-one. Frazier with twenty-four points. Plus five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. That's Memminger guarding Archie Clark. He just joined us. Baltimore took the lead in the, here in the fourth quarter, 80 to 78, on Phil Chenier's 18-foot jumper. And here's the shot that took Baltimore ahead. Coming up. A nice little three foul three there. Looks <laughs> like a halfback coming to the line. I blew that one. I thought it was going to be a replay of Shadir's shot. Foul, Archie Clark at the line. Now, the Knickerbockers are just about out of it. But if they're going to get back into it, they're going to have to stop the Bullets from scoring. The Bullets, they can't let the Bullets score anymore. And they've got to come down and get a good shot every time. But they can't even let the, the Bullets, can't, they can't give another free throw either. And the Bullets come one game closer to battling for the home court advantage. And the reason we said that so much, last night they won the first time at Madison Square Garden in six games. So the Knicks would love to have the home court advantage in playoffs if it's Baltimore. Great More pass by Earl Monroe. He went up to shoot and started being free with for a better shot in there. Reed now has 14 points. That's Chenier along with Clark. Chenier's pass to Reed all alone. The Bullets go over 100 for the first time in six games against the Knicks this year. 101 to 93. Chenier and Hayes battling for the ball. And that about did it for the Knicks. Yeah. And the Bullet fans here at, on the campus of the University of Maryland uh, starting to cheer the home team. Here's Chenier, trying to kill some time. Reardon comes off of the rebound. On the clock, 47 seconds. On the shooting clock, 17 seconds. 101 to 93. The old stall. 103 to 93. A 10-point lead by the Bullets, who defeated the Knicks last night by 22. 103 to 95 with 25 seconds left in this game. Janeer number 45 under to Reardon. And Reardon next to basket and is fouled by Frazier. 22 points for Mike Reardon, a former Knickerbocker. A well-balanced attack by the Baltimore Bullets today. 
It appears that we'll be talking with Mike Reardon and Phil Chenier, Bill Russell, before we leave the air. Yeah, they both had very, very good games today. They, uh, they've, they've been the guy that hurt the Knicks the most today, I think. Although Archie Clark has uh, eight assists, he's done a pretty good job. I think that Phil and uh, and Mike have had just outstanding games. Okay. Jackson for New York. Ten oh, seconds Jackson. to go in the game. 106 to 97. Phil Chenier from California. Hardship. In less than 24 hours, Baltimore has defeated New York twice 